Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr Laura Harvey and I'm currently a lecturer in economics uh, at the University of East Anglia here in Norwich and I'm also the widening participation academic officer for the Faculty of Social Sciences. Um, so basically what that means is, is I work uh, quite closely uh, with the outreach team on different activities and supporting students from underrepresented groups in higher education kind of um, progress onto university and uh, kind of do well. Um, and I really enjoy it. I find that um, this job allows me to uh, combine two things which I'm really passionate about and I really enjoy doing. Uh, so one, on one side that's uh, being a lecturer and teaching and doing my research um, and all that kind of side of it and the other side is kind of supporting students who come from finding participation backgrounds um, which which is which is great and kind of one of my my main uh, interests one of my main passion passions is increasing diversity in economics uh, so I find that this is a, a great job for me uh, which allows me to kind of combine uh, my two passions um, so what inspired me to study economics? Um, I found this question quite hard because there wasn't really like um, a defining moment or a eureka moment. Um, I think it was just genuinely through thinking, um, uh, thinking about things and talking to people. Um, so at A level uh, I chose to study maths, chemistry, business studies and German. Um, I wasn't particularly good uh, at German, so we'll just uh, put that to one side. Um, uh, but I really enjoyed uh, the other three subjects, and I really wasn't sure what it was that I wanted to do. Uh, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do kind of long term, like as a career. I figured I'd just get like a, a graduate job, so I wasn't really kind of sure. I was kind of deciding a bit between economics uh, and chemistry uh, for a long time. Um, so how I kind of came to economics is uh, that my business studies teacher who has a background uh, in economics said that um, he thinks that I should consider you know an economics degree I should look into it see if it's something that um, I wanted to pursue because he thinks that you know I have the, the skill set to succeed and based on what I'm interested in uh, that I would really enjoy the degree um, so because of that he kind of he encouraged me to attend a, a number of kind of taster sessions at the local university just to kind of get a feel for the subject and see if um, that is something that I, I was interested in and I really enjoyed those taster sessions I went to uh, a quite quite a few um, and I really enjoyed them and I decided that you know economics was what I wanted to uh, pursue and I enjoyed my degree so much I went on to do a master's um, and a PhD uh, so I never kind of left uh, that university environment uh, for a long time um, so because I'd, I'd always kind of knew I decided very early on that I wanted to go to university uh, but just what exactly I was going to study uh, was a mystery for quite some time I went through lots of uh, different phases before finally settling um, on economics and I think I made the right choice uh, considering where I am now with my career um, but I think there's still so many misconceptions around what economics is and I think that when I started my degree I certainly still had some of those um, so now when I say that I'm an economics lecturer I always get asked about my thoughts on the stock market or like the latest you know news on the economy and I've never studied a finance module <laughs> in uh, before so I really <laughs> cannot help you there and I think it's a uh, you know really important to emphasize that finance and macroeconomics are subfields uh, amongst lots of fields um, there's so much more to economics than macroeconomics or finances um, and it branches off in so many different directions um, so there's the work of economists ranges from kind of environmental policy um, to market competition you know, from education to intimate partner violence, any social issue that you can think of, there will be an economist working on that. And it's that breadth um, of the discipline which is what is really attractive about it and what is really valuable um, and why I think it, it it's such a fantastic degree to pursue, uh, particularly if you're not really sure kind of what you want to do after you graduate because economics won't close any doors for you. So how did I come to do uh, what I'm 
doing. So uh, typically uh, to be a lecturer you need to have um, a PhD. Uh, so a PhD, um, it was a bit of an odd degree. Um, I treated it much more like a job. Um, so I had an office and I had colleagues and I had uh, I was a teaching assistant so I had responsibilities um, so it was very different to being an undergraduate or a master's student so it was much more like a like a like a job um, a job there but I think one of kind of the main skills uh, if you're interested in kind of pursuing research or pursuing a, a career in academia is that you need to be quite passionate and self-motivated about what it is that you're working on um, a lot of the work is self-directed um, you have to put the structure yourself, you have to organise yourself um, so you really need to be quite organised, quite self-motivated um, and really just kind of be able to um, drive yourself and, and drive your career in the direction that you want. Um, I think being organised and quite motivated is valuable for any career so I think that's transferable um, outside of that. Um, and I also think that it's good to enjoy working with young people if you want to work in a university. Um, I enjoy um, teaching and I enjoy uh, interacting with the students and I think that that's the, the university environment is something that I really enjoy and I think that's why I kind of stayed and I, I pursued this career because I just really enjoy the university environment. I feel very at home here um, and very kind of um, like this is, this is where I belong. So I think that's kind of how I... Um, kind of stayed here and why I'd, I didn't decide to go to the private sector. So yeah, I, I enjoy a lot of it. It's very independent. Um, sometimes it's just working on my own and I enjoy that. I enjoy that kind of that research on my own but then I also enjoy teaching. I also enjoy um, engaging uh, with my colleagues and, and these kind of things. But I think these are skills that uh, will serve you in uh, any career. So in terms of kind of career development. Um, PhD in economics doesn't always lead uh, to a career in academia. There are plenty of uh, PhD economists uh, out there in, in government, um, in central banks or in, in private research institutes. Um, There's so many options. Uh, studying economics doesn't really exclude anything uh, for you. So even by having an economics undergraduate degree, there are positions in central banks or in government. Um, or in think tanks. So the thing that is really valuable about an economics degree is it allows you to develop a way of thinking or a way of problem solving which is really valued by employers. And the fact that these skills are so universally applicable um, means that you can really follow your passions, what you're interested in, um, whether that's climate change or um, you know, market competition, there's really nothing that that you can't do um, with an economics undergraduate degree. Um, and you can really kind of take your career in the direction uh, which is um, which you're passionate about following uh, graduation. So the final point, um, I was asked to recommend uh, books um, for those of you who are interested in uh, study in economics. So I have two book recommendations and I also have uh, a few other recommendations. So I'll start with the book recommendations. Um, so the first book recommendation is this one. Uh, what Works? Gender Equality by Design uh, by Iris Bonet. Um, and this is all about how we can kind of apply what we've learned from behavioural and experimental economics um, to policies, to workplaces, to kind of create more gender equal spaces. Um, so it's very kind of, if you're interested in the more kind of practical aspects of how do we apply this knowledge to uh, a genuine kind of social issue, then this is a great book. Uh, or if you're interested in, in, in gender equality, again, I would recommend this book. It has lots of kind of practical, practical discussions there. Um, the second book uh, that I want to recommend, which I think is really important um, given um, the current pandemic, is The Human Network uh, by Matthew Jackson. Um, so it's all about um, kind of how um, individuals, how businesses, how countries are connected 
uh, and, and what we can learn from that and why is it important. Um, so it's kind of um, a whistle stop tour of um, kind of everything we know uh, in kind of networks in economics but in a really uh, accessible way. Uh, and why I say that this is super important given the current pandemic um, is one of the chapters is on contagion and he takes lots of examples from the Spanish flu pandemic. Um, so if you're interested to talk about kind of it, to learn more about kind of um, how networks affect kind of pandemics and these kind of things and he talks about this R number that we hear about a lot on the news um, then this is a really interesting uh, and a great read. Um, so I think the chapter on contagion is currently available for free on his website um, and I think he's updated some of the discussion to talk about COVID-19 um, because it's published uh, pre-pandemic um, but it's a really great easy read I really enjoyed it it talks about um, a range of different topics um, so for example um, talks about kind of financial networks um, kind of power um, inequality and poverty traps um, these kind of things so lots of a diverse range of topics really interesting topics and something for everyone uh, so I'd recommend this one as well um, I'm also a big fan of podcasts uh, so I have two podcast recommendations uh, firstly would be Freakonomics Radio um, it's a really mature podcast there are hundreds of episodes uh, for you to listen to on a wide range of topics um, and the second one is a much newer podcast um, but I think it's equally as great um, so it's called Inequality Talks um, and it's um, basically interviews with researchers uh, talking about their work on inequality. Um, so again, I think that's a great listen if you're interested in the topics of uh, inequality. Um, so if that's everything from me. I hope you've uh, enjoyed listening to my story. Um, and if you have any questions, email me and get feel free to get in touch. I'm on Twitter. Um, and yeah, let me know. And hopefully I'll see you all soon uh, at an undergraduate degree in economics somewhere. Thank you.